connection to it. It's all wood on both sides. Hey, this is Samuel from Saint Hat, and today I'm at the Abbott Marshland in Trenton, New Jersey. Today I'm reviewing frankincense and myrrh, the frankincense and myrrh perfume oil. Uh, frankincense is um, Basuola sucra and um, the myrrh is Camophira myrrh. This is a special place to me because um, this was where I made one of my very very first videos when I started um, doing videos um, you know, for YouTube you know. and um, I shot my videos up there the walk. It's, uh, it's like a little walkway. It's all trees and uh, it has this this road. It's not entirely done but it, it's a very natural place. You know, it gets you in touch with nature. What I'm talking about, what I'm reviewing is frankincense and mer perfume oil type. Generally, I got this perfume oil type a perfume oil out of curiosity and um, because personally how they call it. Okay, so the first time I heard this, heard about this perfume oil type was um, through the Bible, you know, and um, now I'm more spiritual, but I used to be very, very religious, you know, originally Christian. I still feel my spirit, I'm Christian, but now I'm more um, spiritual, you know, and, uh, but I wouldn't go too much, too deep into that unless it relates to whatever I'm talking about, you know, because again, I know religion, it's a very sensitive topic you know we all have our religion some of you might be muslim some of you might not believe in anything whatever you believe whatever religion or even no religion you know <laughs> i respect it you know as long as, long as we respect each other uh, i think it you know it should be good you know so i'm not going to do it but me personally um as a very religious person at first you know you know going to go to church every day even as a kid go to sunday school uh, we read the Bible, and one of the first times that I heard about frankincense and myrrh was when, um, according to the Bible, three wise men from the east um, came all the way to see the baby Jesus. Now, the whole thing was very, um, <laughs> you know, it's very, um, how do you call it? I don't want to say interesting or magical, but it was very prophetic. Okay, so let's say. Because Christ, um, his his birth was actually prophesied like um, years and years and years before he was born, and it happened that when he was born, actually he was born in captivity because um, he, he was fleeing from um, <laughs> from um, you know from being killed. Actually, his mothers Joseph and Mary were fleeing from getting killed. I mean, from, from the baby getting killed when it was prophesied. So, he, so Jesus was born in captivity. Okay, so now on the side. Now, the three wise men, actually, in the olden text, they refer to them as three magi, meaning they were magicians. They were wise men, very, very prominent smart male men from the east, from the, um, the Middle East. And generally, these people, these three wise men, had, had nothing to do with they didn't know about Jesus, you know, or anything, but basically they read the um, the stars, right? The astronomy. Again, I'm not big on astronomy, but I know that people that could sit there and read about, you know, read up, read, read into the stars, or read into space and read different things, you know. <laughs> okay, all I know is that I'm a Leo. But anyway, so they they saw the stars connect, and generally, what happened? Well, according to um, history according to the bible you know they traced traced the stars to go find where jesus is hidden somewhere in captivity you know isn't that isn't that mysterious that's um that's very special you know now when they went they didn't go barehanded you know they actually went with three gates now this is also very symbolic you know because again when they went they had gold Gold, you all know gold now. Gold is so expensive. It's like one of the most valuable things that 
never gets old. People say old is getting old. <laughs> gold never gets old. You know, it's always like value. There's gonna be value in gold. So they brought gold and they brought frankincense and may. You know, so now why would they bring gold, frankincense and may? You know, and I have always been interested be curious about frankincense and may. Uh, before I did this review, I always thought that frankincense and may was very aromatic, you know, like very aromatic, something um, aromatic like nutmeg, like bay leaf, excuse me. But when I get into the notes, you realize that it, it's nothing aromatic, you know. But I got this perfume um, out of curiosity to, to smell, to see um, what it smells like, you know, what it really smells like. Now I also know that in biblical text, in, in, in the, in the uh, in biblical text or religious text um, or spiritual text even uh, fragrance plays a very very important role a very very big role in religious text in old in the olden in olden times you know i think these days a lot of time we take perfumes and fragrances uh, fragrance oil for granted but it was a huge huge big deal uh, it was huge deal in the past people even show how rich they are based on the perfumes that they, they got. And sometimes perfumes were even more expensive than gold. Matter of fact, as I was reading this, you know, um, in the olden time, about 6,000 years ago, uh, more than 6,000 years ago when this happened, um, um, I don't you know, around the birth of Jesus Christ, even beyond, frankincense and mare was more expensive than gold, believe it or not. Frankincense and mare were more expensive than gold. You know, even in the past, they said they've been um, tests, written tests of when, um, like, uh, the kings, the kings, um, um, the kings from Roman will, will burn tons and tons of men just to show how rich they are, you know. And um, it's associated with, with wealth. Uh, and also in religious texts, you know, actually there was a part in um, the Bible where, um, how do you call it, a rich, no, Christ, Jesus was doing some preaching or teaching, whatever, and um, this prostitute <laughs> actually ran into the door, and everybody was like, why is, he, why is she coming here, like, hold her, don't, don't let her come in, and Christ was like, let her in, let her in, and generally she came in, and um, she had like a very, very expensive perfume. It was a very, very expensive perfume. And generally she poured the perfume onto Jesus' feet and then she wiped it with her hair. You know, very, very classic story. Uh, it's a lot of symbolism there, but I wouldn't go too much into that, you know. So, fragrances and perfume is very, was very, very expensive in the past. Very, very expensive commodity. And so when, um, and if it, if it gets dark, because I'm in the shade, so <laughs> I might occasionally get the, the um, get dark, but I'm sure you can see me. So fragrance, fra um, so frankincense and mare were very, very expensive um, fragrances in the past. Now frankincense is different from mare. You know, there are two separate commodities, two fra separate fragrances, but um, a lot of times they are put together, you know, but separately they have their own benefits and I'll get into that in terms of frankincense and mare. You know, so when they brought it, um, I get to see, it symbolize a lot of different things, you know. Uh, mare, in the past, maybe quite recent, maybe often these few, these uh, times too, um, they were used for, they were buried during, um, they were used during funeral, and um, burial um, times for people that are like very wealthy or very respected or like I was saying, it's an expensive um, fragrance, you know. So if you use it during birth, um, it's 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 um, it's, it's uh, it represents how rich or how wealthy you are. You know. So anyway, they brought out so frankincense. So the gold was supposed to symbolize the. Um, the royalty of the kingdom of Jesus. Um, the frankincense was um, the priesthood, because frankincense again uh, had a lot of um, symbolism or attachment to to rituals and uh, religion. 
Um, the church uses this a lot. There's sometimes the church burned it and it was used again. But frankincense was used to um, a lot of rituals, a lot of um, religious activities and, and different things like that. At certain times it was associated to like evil and witchcraft and um, demonic activities and things like that. So the church banned it, you know, but then also over time the church also uses it for religious and rituals and things like that. Um, and frankincense, you know, incense is associated a lot with that too. Now it has a lot of health benefits, frankincense and may I'll get into that. Um, but just to end what I was saying, so the the and then the mirror was supposed to be for like the burial time of Jesus. So that's what they brought, the, they brought to them. Now when I smelled it, it wasn't aromatic, it was bitter. I was saying, I think I was saying before, it was bitter. It was bitter in the sense that it wasn't aromatic. It was also very dark. It was very natural. It's something that um, I see myself like a village in the Middle East, um, a noble village, people wearing this as a very as their only perfume or perfume oil but also it's like highly regarded like um, something that somebody wealthy will wear you know and um it's very dark you could even tell you could see how dark it is and generally if you see how it looks like it almost looks like blood you know um but it looks like more like a dark amber color you know so that's that's how it feels very it's bitter it's it's um very earthy very grounded um you know very grounded perfume uh, perfume oil now myrrh separately myrrh myrrh in itself is a naturally occurring plant meaning it grows by itself and generally the myrrh plant you know the, the myrrh is harvested from the plant um Myrrh is heavier than frankincense. It's more people associate myrrh with me more like a feminine um, energy, meaning it's more like earthy. Um, it's very reju rejuvenating, and um, when you get into the, the benefit of it, it's just amazing. It's immense. You know, myrrh was used in the past. Um, soldiers will carry with them when they go to war. Um, it's been said that soldiers will mix them with wine to drink them for healing properties also um, shepherds will also do the same thing drink bring them up uh, it's myrrh is very good for for healing you know if you have cuts if you have cuts if you have wounds uh, if you have sores it's a very it's a rejuvenative um, you know um, it's a rejuvenative um, thing <laughs> you know it's a rejuvenative compound or you know fragrance Myrrh is an arabic word which means bitter you know so you can even see i think that the mirror was more of like the bitter smell the bitter feel that i was getting from it before um it's it's more you know natural it um it also has a lot of oral it's also good for your like your oral health you know um, for the gums um some people have horse or sour throat <laughs> you know or they lose their voice people will take myrrh and help them heal um, their throat or heal their voice or e even their gums you know it's any kind of wound, wounds you know and so people even in the past that's why it was highly regarded because um and people associated with with like a heavy like a a divine a divine thing a divine smell because of all the healing restorative properties that it has um, frankincense on the other hand is lighter than myrrh it's more associated with a heavenly smell um, so you know most people will take it even to like for if they feel fear um, like very uplifting emotions people are having negative emotions like fear um, anxiety um, nervousness like frankincense it's been known to help them like uh, alleviate them of those negative or heavy emotions now an interesting thing that i also realized was that it's also very good for um for your lungs you know for breathing um to help you breathe well to rejuvenate your lungs give you healthy lungs and feel good you know um you know um 
you know, give you a healthy lung, terms of breathing and things associated with breathing and things like that. Frankincense was very good for that. Also, as well, it's also good for, um, you know, for healing, for itchy, dry skin, and um, immense, immense health benefit. Now, the commodities, right, the, the commodity of myrrh and frankincense, if you have them, um, uh, generally, I do even explain it. <laughs> if you have myrrh and frankincense, right, let's say these are them, they actually are like resin. So when you're looking at them, they are hard like resin, something like this. Um, different, um, because the myrrh is, is darker, it's heavier than the frankincense. Um, so now, when you take them and you, you mix them up, people mix them up and they take them in, and like the effect is more stronger. Um, when you, most people also burn them as incense or as oils, um, they burn in incense and you could, you could smell them. That also gives you like a, another, um, that also helps you with the health stuff and different things like that. Now, if you take in the, if you use the perfume or your type, <laughs> If you use a perfume, um, you get a smell. You know, you get you get a feeling, but it wouldn't probably be as very as strong as you would t you would ingest the uh, the myrrh and the, uh, the frankincense. You know, as they come out in their natural state. You know, and then when you burn the incense, so it wouldn't be as strong as you take them and use them for medicine uh, or take them in. Um, as they come in a natural state. So when you use the perfume oil type, it wouldn't be as strong as perhaps, you know, going to the drugstore or con contacting your local herbalist and getting the herbs themselves and, you know, preparing something for you to take. So that's what I mean. But I like this because it's not, it's like I could use them as a perfume and I could use them, I could smell it and it will get me in touch. It, first of all, it reminds me of my, it gets me in touch with my religious background remind me of this um, amazing like experiences um, you know my religious experiences and my, my roots you know as I might say or my foundation um, with that and also it also connects me to nature it connects me to um, you know nature to um, to the earth and also like the rejuvenative properties that I get by using it and smelling it because when you smell it in you get the effects you know you get the effect on how it has on your body and how it make you feel in general, you know. So when I found out about all of this, it just I just looked at it in a different way. It just became like super amazing to me. You know, I was very glad. Um, again, I was curious to get it because of my religious background. But when I found out about the real value of frankincense and myrrh, it's like now I appreciate the perfume oil even much, much more, even much, much more. You know, and I use it. Um, you know, use it, first of all, smell it, see how strong it is. Um, this is not something that I wear to clubbing, um, to a party or to work. This is something that I wear around, on a, you know, around maybe the house or go to the walk in the park or around family and things like that. Because um, if you're not into natural perfume oils and perfume oil types, this might be very strong for you, you know, so that's why I recommend um, you know you use it you no know, use it around you know wherever you're more comfortable with at first um, how do you call it it's um it left this in your skin maybe two to three hours it feels strong but it's not strong throughout you know so good to a good two three hours on your skin um, it projects decently it's very very unique you know I don't have anything like this the only thing that I thought was close smelling to this was um, Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. I did a review on it um, a couple of months ago, but it's nothing close to it. You know, it's nothing close to it. Uh, maybe 1% similar to Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille, but they are two completely separate perfume oils, you know. And um, Tom Ford is more of um, the first more roots, ginseng herbal you know this is entirely different yeah this is entirely different you know so that's the only thing that was close so it's very very unique it's versatile you know everybody could use it men women you know, it's totally unisex um to get this perfume oil frankincense and mare 
uh, go to my website the link is below this video just click on it and um, it will take you to the website and you could buy it five dollars and ninety nine cents I will personally ship it to you include shipping and everything free shipping <laughs> I'll personally send it to you and um, you know don't don't you know don't miss out on getting this you know don't miss out on getting this uh, it's very historic um, you know, I don't even know how anything else to say because um, it's just amazing. The health benefits, you could read up the health benefits of Frankincense and Mare and so many, you know, so many of them. Um, so if you are not subscribed, uh, make sure you subscribe. Let me know what you think about this perfume or you, if you get it. Um, the subscription button is right below this video, uh, right here. Um, if it's not here, it's here. <laughs> it's right here. Um, subscribe to this channel that's the only way you get my new videos when they come out every week um, I'm on social media Twitter Facebook Instagram and um, I'm everywhere man it looks so good man I could easily paint this this scene but anyway I'm about to leave it's getting dark you can barely see me take care and until next time